Right, this is going to be another hot take point made episode where I appear and say a bunch of things. Maui appears, says a bunch of things. Kasad, what's brilliant is, you know, you'll know what I'm referencing when I say this, Maui. I can't remember the exact name. I think it's called like, it's called like the Gelman effect or something. Do you know the thing, Maui, the famous concept that goes that if someone's an expert in a field, what will happen is they'll read the newspaper, the saying goes, and when you read it, you see the field that you're an expert in, and you go, this is nonsense. What did this journalist write? Does he know what he's talking about? But the effect goes that when you turn the page and it goes to, like, say, sport, which might not be your expertise, the notion goes that you forget that effect of, like, wait a minute, but in my specialist field, this guy didn't know what he's talking about. And then you just see the next oh, yeah. and you think, oh, they must know what they're on about. This is an expert. The joke is... It's like Kassad, every time he's doing a take, he remembers it is a hot take show. Like, by definition, <laughs> it can't be the most reasonable take. So on his takes, he's like, let's just put it out there. But then the second Maui, like, goes like, <gasps> breathes in that oxygen. He goes like, oh, so you're just taking it. It's too warm. You're fucking lungs right now. Like, And he, he always just goes. <laughs> and, but sadly, that is the secret sauce of the show. That's what I've realized. It's actually, I'll actually be sad one day if Kassad goes, well, I mean, I don't think that'll happen, Maui, but yet again, it's a hot take, so I guess I'll have to give you the... I guess that would actually ruin yeah. the whole dynamic, wouldn't it? It's actually better this it's, way in some ways, isn't it? I don't know. I mean, that, honest to God, that's how I feel on Reddit. Now that it, now that on the inside of the CS space, I just read the Global Offensive subreddit in the comments, and I'm like, this is just absolute horseshit completely. God. But then I and then I'm on the like the NFL one, which I oh, admittedly don't know as yes. much about. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly how I, I feel watching the game. Exactly. It's like, yes. I feel yeah. so stupid. I feel so stupid agreeing with the people that are upvoted on other subreddits because I know how bad they are on our subreddit. Oh, by the oh, way, I will totally crazy. admit, I this is one thing people don't get. You know when I call people plebs in Counter Strike? Don't worry, I know I'm a pleb in every other game. The point is, I'm still going to give my opinion. Like that's all good. <laughs> like in football <laughs> or whatever, of course I'm a pleb. I, I was never a professional. I never followed the game for fifty years or whatever. So it's all good. It's all good, right? Kasad, I have a question for you. Just all to right. get a temperature check for this episode, to know how hyped to get. Are you actually packing heat, or is this just going to be like a normal episode? Have you got any bangers in there? Is there any any listen, nuclear missiles listen, made to be I, detected? You know, red alert I, I style. I have one. I think I have one okay. that's going to trigger Maui a little bit. <laughs> do you know what? Do you know what's sad? I, oh, there's only one thing that Casada has to figure out yet in this game, because in general in esports, he sort of got the better of you know how to change to be an analyst and be like a scene figure. The one thing he's missing is this, which is I'll give you the obvious example. Does everyone remember how when By the Numbers was in its heyday, the joke is every episode would start, but it wouldn't because we'd start like, and here we are By the Numbers, it'd be like, right, Richard, this guy just yesterday blocked me, and then we had that segment called Petty Grievances, right, where the joke of it was it should be five minutes but that could be like an hour of the show when it was like the biggest dramas <laughs> ever. And that, you know, like the three-click Philip thing, that would just last forever, wouldn't it? It would never stop. You, what you haven't figured out yet, which will make this show go to the next level, is when you actually figure out you can just crowbar all your petty grievances against everyone in the scene into your takes in this show. When you figure that out, that's when it'll go to next level because spoiler just, like i don't want to i don't want to reveal too many of the secret herbs and spices in our patented formula here but i've been doing that the whole time don't know if anyone knows your kin uh, all the fun is if anyone talks shit to me boys it's simple they're gonna be on the like and they just get put on the docket like they're coming around like a rotisserie they're coming around at some Your point. favorite guy bemas yeah. Bemas. well i would mention him but you have to actually be still playing and be in tier one like it's all point at this point you know reference to people who are just playing in timbuktu league or whatever what's he in like <laughs> what's uh what's bemas playing CCT uh, P45 uh, pink slip or what, what divisions are you in again? <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard actually what's mad is that the Lithuanian army said that they're willing to take BMAS on to replace Esperanto for no reason. Just they think he may as well have fucking something to do. <laughs> Why are you brought him on? I don't know why. why, why I mean, I'll tell you what, though. The, you, the lists you're giving makes it sound like if you fuck with me, you get Ethan out the whole scene. Like, what's that list? Ether, fucking <laughs> Beamers. <laughs> who else? Who else fucked with me? Kirby or something? Like, it's ridiculous, man. None of them are alive anymore. They're not even in the scene. Fucking hell. At least the Fardy's <laughs> like still hanging on by a thread. At least he's still out there. Barely, Listen, the the, the most important thing is the delivery, right? Like, you cannot just like say. Yeah, well, you can't say whatever you want. But the thing is, like, the delivery needs to be the convincing, right? So that's the part that I need to, like, figure out yet. I know what you mean when it yes. comes to this game. But yes. it's just the delivery part that I need to, like, yes. focus a little bit more attention to. That, yes. that's, that's where I, what I'm lacking.
Oh, one last thing to say before we start is, look, I just do think when things are an injustice, you should just say what you think. So I will just say, even though I've memed about doing events, like, don't worry if I don't ever get hired to another major boys. I did a million of them, and that was a long time ago. Like, I haven't done events since 2021, boys. I'm not I'm sitting here like, God, oh, is the phone going to ring? Like, it isn't, so don't worry about that. But I do actually think it's mental that Maui didn't get hired for this major. That's why I even did my sub-tweet, which was a bit cheeky, where I just said, of like, PGL confirmed Nafani stands, isn't it? Like, it's like, <laughs> oh, what the fuck? The what, what other reason would there be? Like, I, it's a show in There's one day, like, fondless or something. That's a show in to me. You'd get that. I don't get it. Yeah, whatever. You can you can understand the Maui, right? Like, uh, not being, okay, right? He should be there, right? But at some point, you can understand that, that, that maybe they don't like his style or whatever the thing they're, sure, like, whatever, thinking yeah, about. But sure. Yanko is a different story. That's like, pretty that's bad, too. Yeah. Like, you can see that there is, a you know, some sort of a politics thing there. Yep. Like, even though he's a veteran, he was there seven, eight years, he's one of the best in the business, to not get a conversation at least, because, listen, if it's, uh, like, too expensive for them to get Yanko, like, I'm sure with 100% accuracy no that he, they would, they would like, Yanko would accept to kind of give them a discount or, uh, like, take a cut just to be at the major because it's a prestige event. Right, and it's gonna help the broadcast. It's gonna help the product that you are, you know, placing on the fucking screen. So them not doing this is just a very kind of disappointing. And I think that's I don't know why or I don't know any reason because PGL never talked to us. I was never hired by PGL. He was never hired by PGL. It never there was never even a conversation like you know at all. I, I mean, understand for me. I don't care. I mean, but the, the saddest thing is, like, thing is though him, when, when I looked it up. It. Dude, he's missed a bunch now. He missed, like, at PGL Antwerp, this one now. He wasn't hired for Blast. It was only IM Rio he did since fucking Stockholm. Mm -hmm. Like, holy I didn't realize he was... That's three out of the last... Four, I can four guarantee majors, but, okay. you, Duncan, it's not against him personally. I think it's the the politics war between ESL and the... I other, have heard something like that, one. yeah. He has he's to just be perceived as an ESL hire, sure. Yeah, has to be there. Sure. And that's why all these people should not be... In, in every kind of contest to organize the major because they're involving these things into consideration when it comes to like placing like and, and, and producing the best possible show for the viewers. But whatever. Another day for another subject, right? Right, let's do it. Who do you have one Maui? You wanna lead the way? Sure, sure. Please do. I know we're gonna I know we're gonna get to all the major stuff pretty soon. So I kinda wanted one thing that's just from the showdown because I mean okay. it's just there's just one guy. I talked about him on Snake and Banter before. I'm gonna bring him up again. It's a shame that he wasn't able to play the, the finals to qualify. And I'm going to bring him up. I think Heavy God is going to be on a top 10 team by the end of the year. There's no way that this guy's talent isn't going to be recognized by one of the top teams that needs a rifler, trying to find some kind of upgrade across the board. And they're going to see Heavy God and they're going to be like, okay, we could work with that. One prime example of somebody uh, of a team that could obviously use him, Liquid. Liquid could use a heavy god on their roster. If heavy god, because he is of Israeli background, that's Asia. That's the Asia region. So he can actually play for someone oh, like Skulls, right. someone like Yakindar. Right. They would still have their America spot because right. they would still have Yakind or uh, they would still have Naf. They still have Twist. And so if they're able to get someone like Heavy God, that would work out for them. He's not only an asset because he's such a strong individual player, but he's an asset because he allows you to play in different regions pretty seamlessly. He could probably even play for an APAC team really easily. Probably get them some kind of sticker money. And we know that OG is just kind of a more budget org like they're a team that's not trying to break the bank in terms of their signings they're not always even seemingly concerned with being the best team in the world necessarily and so if somebody comes to them with a big offer on their on his buyout i don't see why heavy god wouldn't be moving on to that kind of team unfortunately we're not going to see him at the major so this is going to be a point that i had to get out now before the the whole wave of the major starts to overtake us but again i mean i've just been so high on this guy he was the second highest rated player at the blast showdown itself behind donk and if he had played in that final versus saw i imagine that they would have had a great chance of eating because his replacement he was okay that sound guy but like i mean really not really anything you're going to write home about but no heavy god every time i see this guy performing against top teams he's putting up crazy numbers and he is such a massive difference maker. So I I expect that he's going to get bought out by the end of the year. Do you have any thoughts on Heavy God, Kassad? Obviously, last time we sort of laughed, but to be fair, actually, I've watched a few of these games. He's pretty good. No, listen, Heavy God is the is the real deal. I think he's the real deal. I, I don't think he's uh, he needs a lot of development right now because he was about in endpoint, and then he switched to OG. Both of these teams have their problems in terms of structure and, like, instability and in the roster, right? 
And uh, I can't reveal too much, but I think he's getting sold for Moji. Uh, not by you, not by us. No, no, uh, sure. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but the thing is, like, I, I don't know the 100% information, but I know a team that was really into getting him, obviously for their own, like, sake and the respect over their privacy and, like, whatever, confidentiality. I can't really reveal, but I think he's on the on he's targeted by some teams, especially one one solid team. And I don't know if he's gonna get bought out or not, but definitely he's a player that is very valuable. I think well, he's like he's like twenty twenty one. I can't even remember now, but uh, I think he has enough firepower to deliver. Like I think that Mao is spot on when it comes to this tech. Rarely, but he does happen. <laughs> so so it did happen now, but definitely he's a player that should be at least targeted by some big names right now. And I do agree with uh, Liquid Take. I think he would be a very solid addition to that team. I don't know, instead of Yekindar, because they're not really the same type of player at all. Maybe in a different system, he he would replace him in a, in a different way. But Yekindar is obviously super aggressive kind of kind of player, and Heavy God is not so aggressive. And I think he's a better player overall right now than Yekindar. That's definitely a, a case, at least in, in, in CS2. So him getting picked up by a solid team is a high probability. I think he would handle himself very well in a team in top 10, or maybe like Mouse, you know, or the teams like that, or, or even like, for example, even G2. Fuck it, let's say it like that. I, I think he would be a great addition to any team because he has this, this fact of multi-frag potential and this like, you know, kind of explosive factor towards him. And I, from what I understand, he's a solid teammate too. Uh, he's not a troublemaker or anything like that. Obviously, I don't have any kind of full information. Never talked to the kid at all. But from what I'm gathering, like outside and behind the scenes and outside of the server, he seems to be really good. Now he has these health issues. Duncan is getting ready to say something. <laughs> I can see it in his Because I, I just can tell Kassad's that guy, Maui, where even when they're like 32, he's like, the kid's fucking good. You know what? I'll give him a break. When he's been in the kid, like he's the one who just calls everyone the kid. I can tell if they're just even two years younger than him forever. It's no, the good. thing is, like, <laughs> Duncan, right now I'm 30. This seven man okay and like i I'm, I'm like playing with these 22 like year old kids and i'm calling them kids like they're kids like they don't know sure. shit they don't know fucking what's sure. the difference between the head and their ass right now <laughs> but the the, the 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 thing is like when when it comes back to the, the heavy god i think he would be a solid addition to, to to many teams and i do agree on that point sadly we won't get the scene on the on the major but like his stock will drop and i think he's a good target for for multiple teams what I love, by the way, is the fact that at this point in time, OG has actually entered the status where we actually view them as like a placeholder farm team for real teams. Like, no one actually believes. Like, remember, when a player joins this team, you're supposed to go, hey, if you add another good player, this will be a good team. Instead, you go, hey, this player's good. Get him the fuck off OG as soon as possible. Yay, go OG. Like, it's fucking mental. Because I agree. Like, this player actually, he's far and away one of the best players they've picked up in the last couple of years. He actually just looks good. Like, there's a couple of others they've obviously had over the years but yeah also I was just going to say this because if anyone comes from the old versions of Counter-Strike both CSGO but especially CS 1.6 they will know that one of the strangest things is Israel essentially has no relevance in the history of esports as far as I know I've actually never known of a player in any major game that was good I think there was like a once there was a player who was a, like a quake dueler and I only know that because like I went to a dream hack once and it was on those ones where they pick you up from like Gothenburg airport in like a minivan and he was just there like hey I'm from Israel like the quick thing I mean the joke is even then I asked like a very, vaguely inappropriate question about territorial claims in this country because back then that was still just all fun and games well, you know things hadn't happened but what I'll say is this how where the fuck are they finding all these players in Counter-Strike like remember guys none of these guys are dodds think about it it's like fucking Sphinx Flames Exertion who's oh, the other one fucking Nerds this fucking guy yep. notice these aren't just like these are just like oh they're players like these are all bangers as well these are players where you watch them the crosshairs fucking silly this is either just like a complete outlier or they've got like some insane seam of talent there because you'll notice people like Endpoint at this point unironically are just farming that pipeline like they've had them all haven't they didn't they get nearly all these guys and then sell them on and, and at this point in time like that actually makes me wonder for real what's going on over there like how, how do these players develop who do they play do they do they just play an FPL Kassad do they just play on like higher ping or something what do they do yes, I, I think uh, I think Spinks are flamed I think it was Spinks or maybe Flames back in Rio when we did some interview with him and like, you know, before, or actually after the interview, he spoke about, there is a lot of like this LAN cafes they used to oh, play right. together when they were okay. kids, playing these tournaments and they developed together and they created their first team, second team, whatever. And like you said, Endpoint picked up the most of them. 
you know, somehow they get this like understanding. Whoever was doing the scouting was doing a really good job. They and killed it, yeah. Like, like early development of that players, like he needs to be on point uh, for them to be actually bought by this, these organizations like OG and whoever, right? So overall, I, I do think it, it comes down from this generation of players for a similar age who used to play on these LAN events and, you, you know, struggle through, through these like, you know, local lands and stuff. It is, I mean, that's not a struggle. It's always fun, right? But no, like, sure. you need to fight, yes. fight your way to the top, right? Yes. You're starting with like from the bottom, losing in the group stages and like, you know, trying to be better and better. Hopefully somebody will pick you up. But it also comes down for these players, all of them, about hard work, right? Like I remember how Nerds got like his way into the into the scene. It was in endpoint, then he they, they managed to qualify for that one pro league. I remember I used to I did that. I think Mao you did that pro league too. I remember in six weeks in, in, in Katowice or five weeks when he played for endpoint. They were like dead last in the group or something, but he played well on ancient on middle and he was like super aggressive. People spotted him like and it was like who was gonna pick him up first and ends did it, right? And then they sold him later. So it's like those players they worked very hard, they are very, you know, driven. They are very motivated from the very like early edge because of those lands and like those those things they played and you know they're doing well. So like you said, they have five, you know, very solid players, which is a very hard thing to do. And they're developing similar players if you if you if you think about it, relatively similar sure. players. Right? Yeah, Nerds yeah. is aggressive. Uh, Spinx is a playmaker. Exertion is a more of a playmaker. It's like all these like X factor and multi frag potential yes. difference maker kind of players, <laughs> right? In in kind of a different roles, but overall. Really good for them, and Heavy God is, is the next one in line. Because all I'll say on that point is, it's the it's why in life I've actually sort of learned you have to, to some degree, go with the flow. As in, like, it's better to just sort of appreciate what you have rather than whine about what you don't have. And so, even though, like, for example, I have been thinking, actually, especially because of the Australis result and the fact there's no French teams, I have, and, and the whole Swedish thing where it's only eyeballers trying to be all Swedish, I have been thinking a lot recently. Like, obviously, we have lost a little something from the scene of not having those, like, truly, like, elite, world-class, all one nationality teams. But the one upside, I will say, is this, which is, it does mean you get stories like this, where we might never have ever heard any of these players if they had to stay in their home country and only play for an Israeli team. But at, like a la games like Dota, if you actually are just amazing at the game, if, in an international scene like this, it doesn't actually matter if your country is good enough, you can obviously go to the top anyway, so it's kind of cool in that way. Right, okay. Kassad, give me a is take. Is it my turn? Yes. I thought you were going to do it. But no, I'll no, do, I'll, I'll do, do one afterwards. To... I've got a spicy oh, one. Yeah, yeah, I just do it one to trigger Maui. Come on. And okay. this is what this show, show is all about, right? So, Mongols yeah. are the best team outside of you. <laughs> oh, my. What's Maybe. mad is, what's mad is, I'm almost certain if you said that take, Maui, he'd go mental. Don't you think so? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that would make him smell bad. Just down, listen. Just listen, like, did you watch the, all the RMRs? Yeah. Did you, did you watch all the RMRs? I didn't like, watch all the matches. I watched, like, the big ones, yeah. A A Asian and, of, of course, the American one. The European one, obviously, you're going to watch that. But the North American one, or obviously the Americas, and the, the Asian one. Like, for example, the Mongols were three class above any other team in their region. Like Greyhound, Lin Vision, sure. all, this, all, this, all these teams that were there. They were, like, three classes above them. There was no one even close. Did you watch the North American, like, yeah. It was that pretty was, bad. It was pretty bad that, level of play. That sure. was <laughs> very, very low level of competition sure. right now. Where teams, like team like Liquid Headless, they they had no chance to go through. I mean, obviously they lost to Complexity in that in that final matchup and everything. But overall, I mean, they in theory they should be like, qualifying first, but they were like their level of, of play was nowhere even close. Other teams in the quality of CS was so bad, and you compare the teams that qualified, right? against the Mongols and the way they played, not just in the RMR, but before it and how they develop as a team. Do you think that there is a team in NA from outside of these five teams and inside these five teams that is better than Mongols right now? So Furia, Complexity, yeah, uh, in Legacy, and who is the fifth? The problem player? is, you know what I hate about this, is that actually I was hoping it would be like he'd struggle to explain it, but actually when he phrases it like that, it's sort of actually... He's sort of right, like low key. Like put it this way, Maui. Initially, my brain wants to reject it because, like, I think it seems like. Yeah. But then when I actually think, like, Fuck, they're not very really good right now, though, are they? And then I think, like, even like Furious, like, uh, are they even that? Good? You know what? He's actually sort of right. Is the... put it this way? It's it's at least a discussion. It's at least a discussion. Listen, you, you I know you all like your Elise, and he's sure. good, and he's playing great, and everything. Sure. Elise is great. 
but the rest of the team, are they performing well? No. Yeah, the others could be a bit sus. It wasn't sure. really convincing. Furia, okay, they were 3-0. and they, they qualified. But are they better than the current Mongols who beat them multiple times with this lineup in the elimination games of Tier 1 LAN mm -hmm. events? Multiple times. Not, not, not it's not a bad take. It's not a bad take. I'll give you so that. Okay. I don't think there is any team that can beat it. There is, a, what do you say, yeah. Legacy, Pain, and one more. I'm skipping someone. Who gives a shit? Who cares? Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. <laughs> proves my point. Imperial, Imperial, right? Imperial. 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 Do you think Imperial, any yeah. of those teams is better than the team that's Mongols right. right now? And the teams that didn't even qualify, Liquid, can they beat these Mongols? No. Any other teams in North America they can beat them? No. Any other teams in, in Asia that can beat them? Absolutely fucking not. Not even close. <laughs> by, by the way, it really does hurt my soul to see the Imperial lineup qualify, though. Like, it's not even yeah. that Liquid didn't. It's that, like, Imperial, remember, guys, Fallen isn't on that team. It's literally just like, is there anyone, like, the joke is that team is like, put your hand up if you're from Brazil and you still want to get a salary. And they're like, uh, me, I guess. And somehow they're just at the mid. Like, <laughs> America looks so stupid because of this RMR. I know, look, I will say it's a dog shit format. Obviously, there's not enough chances. And the BO1 part is whack. But even so, it does, it's not a great look, is it, when you see the teams that did qualify? Come on. Sad okay, thing is, I actually think low key. It's, here's the thing, though. What I'll say is this, though. It's a good take, but it's actually not as hot as it initially seemed. Like, actually, you know what I mean? I My brain initially told me he had to be doing a reach there. But I think actually low key, if he means right at this moment, like if we put all the teams in a server, I think he might be right. I think that's not a terrible take. Like, I do think Mongols is good, actually. They seem pretty decent. Well... <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. The, say, the thing, it, it is it is one of those ones where the knee jerk reaction is kind of insane, but really like, no, Liquid is not better than them. Liquid is 100% not better than them. And then I'm basically left with two teams that I have to defend right now against Mongols. One is Complexity and the other is Furia. And you're right, the head to head for Mongols, they've beaten them multiple. Mongols have beaten Furia, not even just once, but multiple times. And so and and pretty recently, too, at Katowice. So I would have to probably give it to mongols over furia uh, i think they play better overall team cs like furia's game plan we still know is just it's just messed up it doesn't feel cohesive still and then i have to just defend complexity i have to say that complexity is better than they sure theory still. be better come on surely yeah. and i think that if we the one thing that's helping me out with my case is that complexity is already in the top 16 of the major <laughs> Just by the formality of this dumbass seating. So I'm not actually really taking that to heart. Like, I'm not actually saying that in a one on one game or like in a. In a you mentioned it. OK, I'm if sorry. you put them in a BO3 against each other right now, I I actually would just barely, barely give the edge to complexity, which is why this is a good take. I still think complexity would beat them, though. I think complexity are better so. than the but Mongols. Isn't that crazy, Maui, that like, yeah, we are talking about this like that it's barely like 51, 49 in favor of yeah. complexity and complexity yes. is a North American like giant organization that just got bought out for $10 million, what? have spots for all the events, play all the events, and they have 51, 49 against Mongols who doesn't have an organization, who don't have a single spot, they have to fight for everything. And they don't have like yeah. a European experience. It's just crazy, right? And then let's see, Furia and Liquid. One Liquid, a championship. Liquid's Euro the bigger division. one. Yeah. It just makes Liquid's no a bigger indictment on them. But that's why I'm gonna like tie this one to a next uh, hot take after okay. we go into the second stage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Here's my hot take then. I've crafted this one carefully, and here's what's sad. Are you ready? This is one of those ones where I don't want it to be true. I don't want it to be true, but it's spicy as fuck. So here we go. In light of what just happened and was announced recently, I predict that Device will never, ever again be a HLTV top 20 player. Ever oh, again in his career. Oof. Here's why. Because there's, there's a couple of reasons. So first of all, he's swapping to IGL, which is a classic thing for even the greatest players ever. Kills your game. Ask your kinda how that fucking goes. That's a classic one. Shocks. Net, some of these people never return to the top again. So already that's bad. Then I'm going to throw in that I actually think his IGL period is going to be extra bad because this is a point a lot of people haven't remembered about Device. Is that condition he has where he has whatever sort of problem he has with his digestive system or intestines or whatever is supposedly exacerbated by stress. Guys, being the IGL is like the most stressful role in the game. Like, I always make this joke. You can win a game that's close as an IGL and be stressed the whole time. Whereas the pro players like, yay, hey, we got the fucking one we want at the end. Yeah, let's celebrate, boys. And the IGL's just thinking about like all the rounds that didn't work. And he called that execute that worked as a fluke, you know. And fuck, I better get in the demos before the next match. And there's only four hours. Like, that that role is designed to give you like a permanent ulcer, even if you're in normal health. So that's a bad sign already. And he's never done it before. So I also think there's a real chance 
chance that now this is a really bad period for Astralis. And then here's the kicker, guys. Obviously, at the end of this year, there's going to be the one where it's the Chinese major. That's the next one, right? Well, think about this. As of right now, no one knows how Astralis will be. They've lost Blame F and one of their fraggers. Devices make himself the agile. So there's a world where they don't qualify to the Chinese major. And I'll tell you right now, guys, if Device is just missing four majors in a row and he's changed his whole game and it's tanked and then maybe Astralis lineup isn't even good, doesn't he just like retire at that point in time? Do you know what I mean? Like, doesn't he just sort of say like, maybe this is it for me or maybe you just... So I, even though like I'd say it, I hate it because I want to believe Device could always be top 20 if you want to, but I'm just going to say it. I actually think this this might be like the, the, the first step down the path towards obscurity for one of the best players of all time. Yeah, I, I mean, the way you phrase it is like, until he retires or un until he... Ever? Yeah. Oh, there, and there you go, Kassad. There's one, last, know, po there's know, one last point I didn't make, and here's the other reason why also. Because when it goes to shit, Kassad, and Astralis is terrible, and they don't qualify for the next major, I'll tell you the other reason I think he's just going to retire or his career's over. Because, mate, there's no one left in the team. There's none of his mates here. In fact, you know I one don't. of the most sad things of all was finding out that thing from Richard's reporting that the main reason why Stown and Yabby joined was that shit to do with the fucking Casper Sproud guy. I was actually hoping for real. That was like, you know, Device was friends with them or something, and they, they agreed, let's play together, like, let's win. I, I was hoping something. So if it's not even that, bro, he's going to get sick of losing and not going to fucking major after major. I don't think he sticks around. I'm just going to say, I think he's, he's going to be done. Listen, Duncan, Come I on. To, as, as, as a good friend I am, I have to protect your take here. I have to protect your back. Does this mean that the, the take stays as it is, even if he stops being an Adriel? Yeah, because I actually think, sadly, he's going to tank his game. Yeah. So it's like, until he yeah. retires. I mean, here's the other thing. He's also played a long time, so I also don't think Percy's going to play five more years. I think he'll, I think if he gets sick of it, he's just going to pack it in, mate. He's okay. a legend. He can do what okay. he wants. Okay, I do I do agree, though. I do agree. I don't know what's up with you guys today. Okay. I keep agreeing with you. Okay. Like, it, it's crazy. Like, But the thing is, uh, I do agree because, as you pointed out, it's a, that role is very stressful. He had already been having problems with stress and, and his uh, gut health and whatever that was, I, I don't know, in the details. But he was missing tournaments, he was missing games, he was struggling with it. And being the IGL is like not really looking at your screen anymore. You are really like not that into yourself all that much. It's just you have to take care of other people, so you have to micromanage different things that you see in as IGL, you don't see as a normal player. Like you notice like missed smokes more, you notice little comments, you notice little like sentences, you notice the communication issues, and that bothers you. Little by little, it eats you up, it eats you up little by little, and then you end up being stressed a lot. And then depending how you react to it, it's, it's like how you, how is it gonna go after, right? So one more important thing for, for that thing to work or fail is the what kind of relationship and what kind of coach you have behind you, right? And they need to be on absolutely the fucking same page for this thing to work, right? Because he's going to be calling the shots in the game. The coach is going to be calling the shots behind the game, outside of the server, on the practice game, on the on the way they play. They need to be on the same page. Like if, if for example, let's say Glaive, Zonic, and who was their Magisk, they were like on the same page when it comes to the leading that team. That turned out to be good. We had the uh, Extas and Apex playing, doing well in, in, in Vitality. And and all this like I can name it I can name more yeah, but that's point. like the normal that's a normal you know comparison but is Raga gonna be on the same page with Device that's a massive gamble like he stepped in after OG who knows how things work in OG or how Raga wants to work or whatever like maybe it's good maybe it's not right but he needs to be on the same page with Device and he needs to understand Device is just stepping into this role of IGL this is not easy like it requires extra work every day it's not like you just show up and you just call things on the fucking fly or on the practice it's extra work before the practice it's extra work after practice so it's not just you know just play and he has the like, stress issues it's not gonna go well but you know overall i do agree with the statement i guess or a take that you said is that he's not gonna make it top 20 if he is the igl and i kind of have a feeling that this igl thing is gonna wear off pretty quickly and he's gonna realize maybe I shouldn't be doing this. 
<laughs> By the way, oh. Maui, there was like a headline. I can't remember what website. I, I sort of like play GG or one of those websites like where it was like an interview headline. And this is like right after the device IGL move was announced. So it was the Casper Straub guy, like the director who come in, right? And the headline was like, like, dude, I'd have to find the wording, but it was so absurd, a headline. It was like, I know for a fact that device is a big fan of Jim and how he is hopping and IGLing. And it was like, man, when I read that, that's like nightmare fuel. Like, no, no! Device is going to win. Like, bro, I don't want to be like that meme of like, stay with me. He's a bad influence. Like, fucking Jim, bro. <laughs> of all the players, please don't be like, imagine Device becoming the Danish Jim. Why? Why is that even in my mind now? Right, what do you what do you think of this take then, Maui? Are you going the other way on it? Well, I would I would imagine that if Device, I think Device is going to give up IGLing fast enough that actually he'll still be a top 20 player. Maybe not this year. Actually, you know what? It's really hard to get into the top 20 this year for him because one, he's already missing this major. And I think that he's going to run this IGL idea for one more major cycle until he quits it as he's going to probably fail at it. So I still think it's possible in the following year that he's able to make it to the top 20. That being said, I know what you I know where your angle is entirely. And it does make me pretty worried because the first thing I felt from your take wasn't like agreement or anger. It was actually just sadness. It was actually I was actually just worried that that it's possible because it does feel like device is kind of choosing all the wrong moves right now. Astralis isn't making the best moves for him either necessarily. And if he's if he's just gonna fall down this uh this whole of just like yeah putting burdening and burdening himself with more and more responsibility as he's unable to trust people because like that tweet that he made about his his feelings and how he's not having fun playing you're not gonna have more fun as an in-game leader <laughs> like that's like one of the least fun things to possibly do oh what you have to tell uh you have to tell now bro who came from a different team you have to tell yabby and stown who want to snake every every igl opera that they seem to interact with you got like you have a you have an org behind you that's just like putting all of this burden on you like this is not getting any better for him and and that's why the take is actually it's pretty strong just because but it's it just like it just hurts me inside so much like i don't i didn't think i was gonna get yeah, I didn't think I was going to feel kind of depressed after any of these takes, but that's kind of the closest I've felt to any take getting me, getting me, uh, just kind of want to lie down. I want to lie down for that, a bit. That one's less of a hot take and more of a hurt <laughs> take because you just realize, yeah. like, it's just sad, isn't it? Like, the more you think about it, the more it hurts. But it's okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, like, this is astrologist. Why don't you just get hooksy to a drill? I mean, if, if <laughs> no, it's, it's, that's, that's terrible. terrible. If he's like, if he's so, so good and I'm wrong, if he's so good, why don't you just take him? Like, it will be a perfect fucking thing, right? I choose another wise. player, yeah. like perfect. Yeah. Then do it if you believe in him so much. I mean, the craziest thing, unironically, if you think about how the brains of CS fans work, is logically to them, they must now actually think, even though this means they must just be twisting their logic up into like Twister-esque fucking pretzels. Think They must logically think in heroic, the good ones were Shush and Tessis, the players they never gave a fuck about the whole time. Meanwhile, because Cadian failed in liquid, they'll be like, you can't have been Cadian. And then Stown and Yabby are obviously bombed. So the joke is, you've all just 180 your whole opinion about heroic, even though the whole time everyone was telling you those players are underrated. You're like, There's, they suck, just replace them. You can make any super team. Right, let's move on then. What is the next take? Do we have another one? Well, is it Bowie or, or should I? I think Bowie's turn, right? If he wants to I, go I, now. I could go, but I, I don't really... My takes are pretty mild this time. I'll just do this one and then I want, I'll let you take over, okay? Mine, mine are pretty mild just because, like, I'm just looking at the landscape of... Uh, the I mean, if, if anyone wants a major. suggestion, an obvious one you could do is just pick someone crazy to win the major or come deep or something like that, right? Oh, you know, well, I, I was going to do a... I was just going to do a last place. I was just gonna oh, okay. Go on, then. What yeah. is it? Who's so, going to come last? What's the hot take? Come on. So I think, I think my last place team, despite the fact that they did so well at the America's RMR... Uh, I'm just gonna pick Imperial. I just think okay. they're an O3 team written all okay. over it. I just don't see. I don't. When I watched Imperial play, because I mean, Kasad, I think you actually. I think you watch the Asia's RMR a little closer than me. So maybe you want to pick Linvision. Maybe they meet up, and then it's just the battle for who's the worst. But in terms of actually watching that Imperial team and and why they were good, I felt like a lot of it more so was spurred by the fact that the individuals were just overperforming. Like. Don't get me wrong. I love Henny. I've talked about it publicly before. He's been my favorite player many times in this game, but I did not expect to see 
Henny performing that well as an individual going into this one. And Vinny as an in-game leader, I, I think like there's something that's like brewing there, but I don't think it's really ready yet for actually getting any kind of victory at the uh, at the major itself. So first round matchup versus ends to me, they're losing that. And I don't think it's going to get really that much better unless they run Like I think Linvision and Imperial are kind of my bottom two teams right now at this one, even though Imperial somehow were able to, to go 3-0. It's a pretty shit take, if you ask me. <laughs> what is this, a pick and video? Like, what the fuck is this? Like, I thought this is a hot take point made, and you go with a 0-3 prediction for Imperial? Because they, they went 3-0. It's because they went 3-0. I wanted to do it because they went 3-0, and I was just like, I just don't Duncan, see this, is this continuing. Is this the standard of this show? Here's the thing. I'll say this. By the spirit of, by the technical letter of the law, Maui got a hot tick because they 3 0 But I think by the spirit of the law, that's a whack tick. Because I agree, because I'm like, it's not even a hot tick that goes 0 and 3, is it? Like, it's actually like a decent, pretty good chance, I think. Like, I think it's, it's just, just a normal a, it's, tick. A, it's, a re, it's almost like counter results oriented yes. picking here. Okay, okay. true. It's, like, actually, it's watching the game and saying that 3 0 is a fraudulent 3 0 to me. That's all. I so. just, like, like you said, it, it would be me saying, like, listen, Get a pretty good hot take. Hooksy, he's got a bottom frag in G2. Like, that's exactly like the same thing. Okay. Like, it's just, we need to raise the bar on this. Right, are you ready then? Because I've got a banger for you right now, Kassad. This is a fucking heat rock. Are you ready? Right, go, Here's go. my prediction, right? It's a double prediction. There's two components to it because this is, it's going to be so big that if I hit my first one, I'm going to parlay it into an even bigger one that'll wreck the whole scene. Are you ready? Right? Because everyone keeps thinking, Zemu's the best player in the world. They keep actually, I notice. Have you not noticed how no one has panic stations for Vitality? Guys, this year's been shit for Vitality. Like, it's actually outrageous. True, Zemu carries and the rest of the players look fairly good. So I feel like people haven't caught up yet. They're like, Vitality looks fucking shaky coming in this major. So here's my prediction. It's a two-parter. Vitality won't win the major, but they not only won't win it, they won't win it in some sort of a context like they'll go out in the semis or the quarters. And since the next player break is in June, they will kick a player from their lineup. Oh! Because I'll tell you what, when they don't win the major and they just come semis or quarters, all they'll have done this year is fuck all. They won't have any trophies. They'll just be sat back. Some wanker like fucking Donk will be winning. The yeah, damn, I am, I am the champion. I am whatever. And then they'll just go. And here's the thing. You're all forgetting this. You're all thinking, but Vitality, they won all those. That was the old lineup. This new lineup, they put it together piece by piece. It's a ship of Theseus. I'll tell you what, if a lineup like this doesn't work, they will fucking turn on each other like rats and someone will be booted. It might be Mezzi, might be for who the fuck not might be maybe they come in with the apex chop who the fuck knows all I'm saying is there you go I've put that hate out into the world this I'm such a zero hit <laughs> I've constructed that take there you go. I'm taking there you go I like that take motherfucker double take okay let me think about this like changing a player by the end of the season is definitely a possibility I think they might go for a messy flames kind of something right. I don't think it's going to be Apex because he is kind of uh, a glue for that team together with x -Test, especially with x -Test now that he's back. Sure. And I think they're holding like this little control over the team and that what things is, are happening in the CS division. With right, I think that's that's how it should be working. And they have that like staff around them that are obviously like making decisions all together with them. So if I had to think like about the change, it would probably be, I mean, obviously they're not going to change Spinks, they're not going to change Apex and definitely not going to change Zyle. So who is left? Flames? Yep. Or the most recent addition, Messi. So in my opinion, it, it's going to be 65-35 in favor of Messi being replaced because Flames is also like tight with Spinks and you know how things work in the teams. People stick together, like they kind of put in the good work for each other. Like it's just the way it works. Uh, the other thing when it comes to the placement of the major, I can see them in, in the playoffs. I can see them in the playoffs simply because they have that like aura of favorite in them that's gonna carry them through the sure. through the through the legend stage. But in the playoffs, like all bets are off, right? You're facing a team that's has a hot hand, a team that's in the rise, that has confidence, they're not gonna care that you're a favorite, or you face a team that's also a favorite, like you know, spirit, for example, or sure. faith yes, or sure. whatever, right? Like it, it can't be a thing, yeah. They don't gonna be scared of you. And the the game that it is right now, MR12 and all this shit, it's not even that impossible that they go out in the quarters. But I think they're going to skip the first stage relatively easy, 3-1, I would say. 
uh, they might lose in that 2-0 game and then, you know, uh, finish it off with a 3-1. But uh, I also, so I'm kind of agreeing 50% and 50% not agreeing. That's that's my response to your mild take. <laughs> well, I wasn't even mild, that was a banger. I had to know, by the way, here's why that's a fucking fire take. Because the joke is, if Vitality wins this major, you'll all just go, it was obvious they'd win, wouldn't it? And, well, is it then? Fucking put your balls on the table now but then. But that's mm. like your take to people who think, sure. like, who cannot think for themselves. Basically, yeah. he said, like, they're going to change a player if they don't make, if they don't do well on the major. Yeah, great. Well, well, that's a pretty good not... take. I mean, that's not, that's a fucking obvious thing. I, mean, no, I think it's a bag of take. Go on. Oh. I think the, the, where, well, where it gets interesting is where you're saying that they're going to replace somebody because I don't think that Vitality is going to win this major. Right now, I would have Spirit ahead of them and then you kind of would flip a coin. Do you think FaZe is better than, than them or not? I think FaZe is better than Vitality right now, actually. So I think they're probably the third most likely team that I would have to win it all. The, the switching of player is like, you're basically putting faith in this organization to say, wow, we had a bad six months, even after ha winning the fall finals and world finals. And then, I mean, I guess you're kind of like going back to the the Kassad banana cup take that these didn't matter to us at all. And we're just going to, we focus on Kato, we focus on the major, and we didn't do well in those events or well enough to our standards at those events. And then they're going to replace somebody. I, I think like the likelihood that they swap out a player is under 30% after the major. Then it's a hot take. Then it qualifies. Yeah, so, so I, I know. I, so okay. I agree that it's a hot take okay. because I don't think that they're going to swap a player out. I okay. think they're going to, I think they're going to come into eighth to fourth place, eight, eight to third, I guess is what you would say. And then they're going to, they're just going to leave their roster as it is. They're probably going to cite some reasons why they didn't peak, things they, they could do better in the future. And yeah, the guy that's on the chopping block the most, if he just fails outright, is Mezzi. Like he's, he has been performing pretty badly other than having one good event with Vitality. Every other event, he's been pretty mediocre, actually, even for his positions. Like, people are like, oh, he's not getting enough help or not doing well for his role. It's like, well, you know, he actually had some of those same positions and roles on Fnatic, and he just flat out did better. It's just that when he made this jump that he now has to play top five teams all the time, we're seeing that he's not actually always cut out for it. So it's a little bit concerning for Mezzi because... I think he, I thought he was going to be a little bit better than what he's done, actually. I even, even as one of the people that I'm not, I don't want to consider myself a Mezzi hater because I've never been a Mezzi hater. I've just been a Mezzi reality checker for a lot of people where I've been like, like, and that's what I feel like. Like, I hate skulls more than I hate Mezzi. I don't, I don't, I don't hate Mezzi. Okay? I don't hate anyone, my, my way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I just like that. Too short. No. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't, I don't hate, I don't hate people. I just, I just, uh, listen, I call listen, no, 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 listen, I'm, I'm joking, obviously. But the, the, what I'm going to ask you is this scenario. Like you say it's under 30, but how is it under 30? Like in this scenario, because Duncan said by the end of the season, that's what no, said, by right? the Duncan? player break in June, at the end of the season. That's, that's, yeah. that's the end of the yeah. season. That's the yeah. end of the season. That's what you mean so, by season. Yeah. 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 So they have major, let's say they go to the playoffs, they lose in the quarters to phase or whatever, right? They go to pro league, they lose in the, quarters right and what else is there another blast and that's it's it, like right? i am cheng do or whatever, I am not cheng, whatever. yeah they, they're even playing it and know. they don't win that like is that enough for you to change a player if you are vitality if you oh? win like chengdu or something no, like no, that. if you don't win a single thing oh don't don't win a single thing like, quarters play up uh, pro league quarters the major it's don't win chengdu it's gonna, it's, they're gonna have to obviously, like, they're gonna look at the landscape and say, is there anybody that we think is just certainly better than Mezzi? And if there is anybody that's a possibility, I don't see why they don't go for it. Vitality's an org that cares about winning. Exactly. But so I, I'm telling you, how is that under 30% then? Because the reality, by the way you're explaining it, is they're not gonna win the major. You said it yourself. They're most likely not gonna win the pro league. And there is a good chance they don't win Chengdu. If they're even playing it, I don't even know. But the thing is, like, if those three things happen, which is very likely, how is it under 30% they're going to change the player? Oh, I think, they, I, mean, I think they can win, like, a Chengdu or Pro League. I think, I, I don't, I'm not ruling that out. I think they oh, could win yeah. one of those. So they need to win one event for them to they, keep the whole five player. They win one Banana Cup. Yeah. And there is no Banana Cups. Like, they're all passed. Like, there's, there's the finals of Blast, but, yeah, that's only one. I'm just, like I'm just using am, your term I of am, banana cup calling. What, what is the next take? Major. What is the next take? Come on, then. All right, all right. At least I'll go to the next one. It, it, it's also North American thing. Liquid oh. needs to change 60% of their team <laughs> to become better. <laughs> Dude, haven't they played like, like a group okay. stage? Planes of one. No, they haven't even, they haven't even played one full land. Like, it's not that. The RMR is a land. 
Did you see okay. all the qualifiers? It wasn't good. I'll give you that. It wasn't Did you good. see all the games they played? Did you see like the way they played the RMR? Like, are you are you hundred yes, percent sure yes. that? Are you gen- are you genuinely suggesting Duncan. that they're only going to keep Naf and Twist? Is that really your suggestion? D- 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 yes, Duncan. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Can, can start, there is no there is no universe where they're kicking Cadian already, bro. You only just no, joined yeah, the team. Not, there's no listen, world. There's listen, no way. They're not doing that. Did you watch the North? This tells me that you didn't watch the North American. Look, RMR. you saw the score, did, you did. tweets, <laughs> and you fucking didn't watch a single game. No, listen, listen, Kassad, I acknowledge you was really bad but put it this way how is that fucking mind body esports video gonna look if Cadian's booting after like <laughs> two months like after like a bunch of qualifiers like well, they, can't, right? they can't kick it's him on the team bro the esports who's <laughs> shooting people and making calls in game no, but they, they can't come online because I do a tweet like announcement we're changing everyone except that and twist like that's just not gonna happen listen, it's just listen like, I messaged <laughs> Steve I messaged Steve after their game immediately Steve, like uh, the, the GM or like, like a Steve the or whatever. I told him, buy kick some and you won't regret it. He never replied. He never okay. replied. He did reply. Okay. He never replied. But you, the you thing just is, planted like, the seed. No, no, it's just I told him. Like, he, buy like, this. I have nothing against KDN or other players, like personally. I just don't think that group, that group of players is good enough together, right? And also the Kadian is taking off the, the spot of the Oper and the IGL at the same time. That shouldn't be a thing. You should have an Oper and you should have an IGL, right? There's plenty of Opers for you if you're liquid. 600K, is that what they paid for Skulls? Some of them, yeah. Yeah, some yeah they saying, paid 600K. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think there is a 600K Oper that, that can play in liquid? In EU, in CIS right now. Should be tons, I, I see them. Uh, surely, right? And if they want to you know, spend some more money, they can bid for Monesi or whatever, right? But the, the, the thing is, like, right now it's not good enough. Yekidar needs to be replaced with someone like, you said it yourself, Heavy God maybe, whatever, right? And then Skulls, obviously. I, I, don't, I don't know how good player he is or how bad player he is. I know how he has his opinions, but... Just being, being, imagine like being put in that spot in that team. That team has a lot of personalities. Oh, for sure. Like personalities, very, very big, hard personalities. Uh, twists came from phase. They were winning everything. They won Grand Slam. They were a championship team. Cadian that came from Heroic. That was a championship team. They had their own processes, their own ways how to do things. Yekin, that is obviously a guy with big personality. We saw that in the past. And you and obviously I know Nath, and he also has a quiet, but he has a personality too. He wants things done in a certain way. He wants like you know to play a proper Counter Strike, and then you have Skulls obviously put in that position to fucking without any any kind of decision making, right? Liquid missed an opportunity when Nerds was available. Nerds was sold to Heroic for 500k straight up buyout, right? And he went there with so Liquid could have bought that duo, and they would have a great player in Nerds. And even if they kept Cadian, he would know how to use Nurse. Nurse is a solid player, one of the top 10 players right now, not even top five. And he can do so much in terms of like helping with the calls, helping with the ideas and all these things. And he's a much better player right now than Yekindar ever was. So that was the opportunity that was missed by Liquid. Right, Kixan is a young, up and coming, obviously up and coming IGL, very wanted by some other teams. He had a set pri- uh, buyout. Liquid didn't take it. I don't know if they even inquired about it. They missed so many opportunities. Right now, they went for these names like Kadian and you know and Twists and, and all these things, and it obviously hasn't panned out the way they need them to be. You said like they need more time, but like reality, in, in, speaking in, in in reality right now, do you see this lineup? being better in like three months from now, better to the point where they are in contention to win the event or being deep in the playoffs because Liquid is a not, not a group stage team, not a group stage or especially if you spend 600k for a player. You know who costed, who was, uh, who was like, whose price was 600k? Monesi. Right? Yes, it was two years ago. So the, the inflation and the market value and all this shit come into play. But the thing is like, Right now, 600k for that player. I don't know who signed off on that one. Somebody had to grip the green light and say, yeah, send them the check, right? Which was obviously a bad idea. Not because he's a bad player, but he doesn't worth it. So for 600k, they could have got much better player and much better team structure. So 60% is what I would change. 
to make look good. All I'm going to say is, okay. I'm, I'm just saying this as a harmless joke that obviously has no connection to reality or any the likeness of anyone I might imply I am referring to. But it does seem to me at this point in time that like buying Brazilian players using a buyout reminds me of the international art market where it just looks like money launder at this point in time. It looks like you go, like, how much money would you like to buy him for, sir? And he goes, well, if I was to get 200k back, I'd probably like to buy him for 700k. Well, 700 it is then, sir. Here's my 500k, then here's your two. Like, this is like, because the problem is the whole numbers in that one region just don't make any sense. I'm with you, Kassan. This is the part that I don't get, is when you look at the liquid lineup, obviously he's like the placeholder. He's like the last name, isn't he? Like, And the joke is, Skulls at the moment isn't Skulls the player, because barely anyone knows him from pain. He's just not K Serato, because they didn't get K Serato. So the idea that piece costs you 600k is kind of wild, I have to say. Like, I don't know what, what universe that makes sense. Surely you'd min max that spot if you're going to replace him anyway, wouldn't you? So I don't it just know. got a little, they just got a little bit better player than Rainmaker. Yeah. Right? yeah. In terms of like skill. That's if all. even that. If he, even that. I think, I, and Rainmaker is farming right now in tier 2. So yeah, I don't know if he's even better than Rainmaker. His, take a look really at his know. numbers right now. He's like playing sick. Right? But that's a different topic. But overall, like I'm saying, like they need to like make a plan right now. They failed. Obviously, they're going to play Pro League. I don't know. That's maybe Dallas because they qualified. And make a plan called IEM, uh, not IEM, PGL Shanghai 2024. Get what you need. Get what you need in the player break. Do your proper boot camp. Do your proper preparations. Build a structure. It can be done in three, four months, definitely. And just return liquid to the like winning ways. Because right now, spending 600k, I don't know how much they spent for Kenya. Was it free or they had to buy him out? I'm not sure. Like, nobody nobody ever mentioned sure. that, right? Not sure on that one. No, no, nobody ever mentioned I, that. Like we, we don't know that. So maybe they spend more money on Kadia. Let right? me let me just yeah yeah. Let what me just say this? was he bought out or or uh, contract expired? Like there's questions, right? For all this money that he's been he spent, what did they get in return? Like yeah, I understand it just started whatever. But like the reality of the things, like things have been looking bad in the qualifiers, look bad on land where they shouldn't be looking bad because all these players are very capable and they were very successful on LAN events. Right now, it's a problematic. For me, like I said, I would just react immediately. Yeah, let's... So, okay, so obviously I've been out for the Skulls move and a lot of that was motivated by the fact that he had a 600k buyout, which I always felt was completely unjustified. And I want to just say that I, I actually... I'll take your, your point and I'll just take it down one notch, a single notch, because I don't think you actually need to replace 60% of the lineup. To me, it's just 50% of the lineup. The 50% being Zeus, Yakindar, and, and Skulls. Zeus, to me, has actually proven to be detrimental to this team's success, and in terms of what he did with Fluxo, it was straight up abysmal. If you, anybody watched Fluxo play, they came in last place at the previous major. It was a miracle that they were able to make it, and the only reason they were able to make it to the major was because they had they were able to play Paqueta for the spot to get the fifth spot out of the America's RMR. And they barely beat them. Like, it wasn't a convincing win at all. Like, when we were working that America's RMR and watching Fluxo in the lead-up to it also, back for the Paris Major, that was probably one of the worst called teams I have ever watched in my life. Like, that was literally watching Lukowski trying to 1v9 every single round because that guy would just run out of anywhere, any got any spot, and just try to get a multi-kill entry as, like, Woody is doing God knows what on the other side of the map with an op. Phelps is just doing his little weird ass lurk and then the other players are just doing anything that they felt like also like there was no structure to that team whatsoever that we could follow when watching those games and then also on this team Zeus obviously was a big reason that they brought skulls into this lineup and he got them to go for the 600k buyout I mean like I brought up before the fact that this is like to me it reads as a nepotism move that skull that skulls was brought on because he was of his of his uh Zeus knowing him at all well now like Thorin, you're saying it's like potentially like like a money laundering thing. Like, why is this guy getting so much money? Why did Payne get paid so much? Does Skull does Zeus have some involvement in Payne or in Skulls' money? Like, I need to know these things because to me, it still doesn't make any sense that he's on this roster. And the reason it can just be 50%. You get rid of Skulls, you could there's actually many anchors in North America that would satisfy the three-fifths or more people or like just majority roster Americas that would have done just fine. If you even look at uh on M80 that rec guy very similar numbers at this major or at this at this event he doesn't have the language barrier because because so, so many people in my mentions are coming to me and saying 
oh, give Skulls more time. He the like the language barrier, it's gonna get better. It's like, why did we have to even deal with that in the first place? Why did we have to even why did what's the point of getting a guy where there's a known language barrier for this ceiling that isn't even that high? Like, like if Skulls were putting up 1.3 ratings against Brazilian opposition and against top 30 in his limited numbers, he was like a 1.2 rating player. I say, yeah, give him time. Let's see what the what his ceiling is once he does learn English. But we know that his ceiling, even when he's speaking in his native language, is like a 1.03 versus top 30 opposition. Like, this was never a number where I was like so super convinced that, it, oh my God, if he's able to learn English to a really high degree, this is going to be the difference maker. No, it's not. Like, there's other, there's other American anchors that are just as good as Skulls right now, probably on pretty cheap buyouts too. And so if you get rid of Yakindar, bring in an America, you could bring in an America's anchor or an America's, probably an America's anchor would be a little bit easier, like a rec type player. And then you also just look for a newer European edition, like a heavy God, for example, then you're, then I think you're cooking. I don't think Kadian do should need, be leaving just yet. Maui, do mm -hmm. you need an anchor? Like, that is a pretty solid anchor himself. If you want someone that's going to go roll for roll with souls, he took some small site anchor spots too. Right? Like, but some. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you don't need a proper, and you can get so okay, many right. players. And obviously, like, okay, if, if you went for a cheaper, like, option that you need to, like, go economy, right? And you need to, like, you know, think about the money and all these things, but they spent 600K allegedly. Yeah. I keep saying it too. That's why I'm, that's why like, I'm just that like, that is the gassed. problem, right? If, or, you go to Europe and you just have an, an enormous <clears throat> amount of players that cost, half that and they're twice as better yeah, yeah I'll, I agree. I'll, I'll, I'll give you i'll give you an example brolan was 300k brolan yeah it's a little bit of a risk but still experienced player defensive player played multiple lands he speaks english he's now in mouse sports do you think he would do a better job than skulls in liquid Obviously, yes. Like he's way better. He's and proven to be better. He's better today. It wouldn't even be three hundred. It would be half that or whatever the fuck you yeah. can negotiate down to. Instead, you go and pay though this much money to get this. Like this is what I have a problem with when it comes to liquid and some other organizations too, with because they completely fucked the market up. So right now we are where we are. But yeah, uh, sixty percent of the team. But maybe I can agree with Mario on fifty percent. 60% is too much because here's the problem. What the problem that we're doing here is this, right? Logically, if this was so obvious that this lineup shit, then when it was even speculated on for months that this would be the lineup, we all heard the rumors. I mean, the only difference was it might have been Case Right instead of Skulls. That's real, by the way. That was something they were trying to do. I even threw the in that piece of info out there, which now, by the way, has aged like a fucking banger. That one I told you where maybe Elise was considered, but someone vetoed him in the team. Quite an interesting one now, isn't it? Because you imagine slotting a player like that in. But what I will say is this the reason why I think 60% is too much, which look, it's good as a hot take, but I just don't agree. I don't think it is what they should do. Is that's too many players. Like the real problem this team has, the joke is you guys are tunneling on skulls. But the reason you're getting the skulls is you're just jumping over a giant chasm called Cadian and Yakindar. Am I missing something? Cadian and Yakindar never played like this in other teams, boys. Like Yakindar used to actually be like a HLTV top 20 player, like for reals. Like not just because his team was good. He was like straight up like eye test, a top 20 player. And then Cadian obviously famously was not only like a really good IGL, he could sort of frag while doing it. Like neither of them are doing anything anything vaguely like the shit that got them the spot on these teams. So I'm with you. Skulls has played like shit and I agree on the buyout. Like actually now that ha does look terrible in hindsight, but also two of the most important pieces in this team are just absolute ass right now. So quite frankly, at the moment, like, you're actually treating Cadian like he is supposed to be fucking glaive. Like, he's supposed to be super mind. It's not just even about his game anymore. So, I, like, yeah, my problem is this. if I, Knowing teams, I think the idea you can change three is not even plausible. Like, there's no universe where... Like, if you did spend 600k, well, then you're not going to turn around. I'm sorry. All, all orgs do operate on sunken cost fallacy. They're not going to turn around and kick the 600k player. Like, you're going to give him more chances because you spent 600k. That's how you're going to think in your mind. Then, on the other players, like, if I had to guess... This is why I don't think, personally, they'll change almost anyone if I had to guess. Because maybe they do one player change. Because again, with the Cadian one, you've basically built, he's like going to be the whole face of the team now. You, you've got him in in a way where it's like you haven't made it like, hey, we're going to.
going to test this lineup out. You basically made it like welcome, Cadian. This is like the new era of Team Liquid. And then finally, you have um, fucking what's his name? Your Kindar has basically also been one of your faces of the team the last two years. So I actually think they're in a really tough spot. Like here's the joke: unlike the Astralis one, where there are people you could cut or bench, but we might not like it in the game. I, don't, I think they're actually sort of checkmated. I don't know who you can bench. Who, who could you bench without looking stupid either financially or you just won't get as big a name? So I, I imagine they'll do maybe one play. I don't know, actually. This is actually a really bad spot they're in because the problem I had was this, Maui. I at least assumed they would get through this RMR. So it's like, right, as long as you get the mage, it's, it's all cut. We can turn this around. There's time. The problem is because they haven't qualified for anything at all. That's the thing that I think is more pressing than even how bad they are. It's like, like, how many tournaments will you even get at this point in time? You're going to have to go into the next cycle for all the online. Like, the joke is, you could actually, no joke, but just only have Blast as your lands for this year. And, like, Pro League, that's it. Like, what else yeah. are you going to have? So, that's the thing that might push them. But there's no way they should... Because here's the problem, Kassad. Like, our, when you say they should change 60%, so they should. You also should bring in three different players at once. Not just do like one player change and then see what happens. You bring in. Remember, we already started from zero with this. Like, we're just going to bring three totally new players in. The thing is, like, it's a tough call, right? It's a very difficult decision and it's a very like risky decision. Sure, to make. yeah. Like more than risky, simply because it's not just the three guys they just brought in, right? Yekinder has how many months on his contract, and Nav just resigned his contract in what November or October, right? Something so like, he probably yeah. has two more years. So they can have, they cannot have anybody to replace you without like getting a massive loss, right? Simply, obviously, we don't know how much they paid for Cadian and Twist or if, if they paid anything for them. So, but if they didn't, then what's stopping you from removing those two players and get another two players? Nothing, right? Especially when it comes to Cadian and then bringing a new IGL. Because, like I said, maybe you need to take one or two steps back to get, you know, yourself forward in the future, right? Because what's the alternative? Like, let's look at it this way. We cannot sell the players right now because we just bought them and we spent 600k and 300k, whatever the fuck was the price. And then we, obviously, it's not looking good. It's very problematic inside the team, outside the team, whatever the fuck. So what is the alternative? We hope that it's going to get better. And the other alternative doesn't get better. So you waste another, what, six months, another major, another potential multi-million dollar income because North American region is much easier to qualify right now than any other region, including the Asian one. So what is the, the, the alternative there? We don't qualify again with this lineup who failed now. Maybe complexity gets better. Maybe energy gets better. Maybe nouns get better. Maybe Brazilian teams, maybe Furia gets a proper team and another Brazilian team shows up and they get better. Where is your spot in the RMR? That you need to go through the open qualifiers again. And then you lose that ability to play for the next major you lose a couple of million dollars there and then you make a move in the winter break like i mean do you do that what is the what is the the, the smartest solution for liquid at this point for me maybe i value maybe not 60 percent, maybe 40 maybe two players no, maybe it's a good hot take i just think it's a fucking yeah, yeah, may, hot take. May, may, maybe you give skulls another another chance another shot because maybe you give even katie another shot but does Yekinder get another shot in this team? He got a shot as a player. He got a shot as an IGL. He got a shot as another player. By the way, I will say one thing I do want to just put out there, because I think in talk shows, I hope people keep bringing this lens up, is I tell you what actually this last six months has shown me. When I look at the, some of the different lineups that have been made, I would, as a pro player, be very nervous about any projects that are being built from the scratch, like from the ground up, and they would never play. At this point in time, I would, for real, already be joining teams where it's like they've got a core of three, and I know they were good, because like this is scary how many of these lineups on paper look like they could be fire, and then they're just never even vaguely good in the so it's actually it's really disturbing yeah it is it is very hard it's also the financial aspect of the thing right well, of course when yeah. well just i imagine they have pretty high salaries in liquid Number except two. maybe skulls right mm -hmm. yes like maybe he has like a solid salary but not high but cadian wouldn't go for anything less than no 15, no 20K, sure right and then twists wouldn't go and downgrade from phase into liquid without getting 20 25 30k and then, you know, you have other players, Nav resigned. He wouldn't resign for to salary cut, cut as well, right? So there's a lot of money there. A lot of money that's mm. being spent. I am sure in Liquid, yeah, they have their sponsors, they have everything. But the income that you get from the stickers is a multi-million dollar thing that can cover up for all of your salaries for the, few, for the next year. 
right? That is a financial aspect of the whole thing. So it's a very tough decision for Liquid right now in terms of what they need to do. Do they risk another major cycle and give this team like a proper thing? And like if they, if they fail, then they change? Or they immediately react and change something to qualify for Shanghai and maybe get some money back? Right, so it's just a very difficult call. Also, I want to know what's the situation in Liquid. I mean, we'll never know this, but it would be nice to know. Does Zeus have a full control of the thing? It was implied what's... to me he did, so no, 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 I'd but, be very but, interested what, to say. Was, was he the one who says, like, listen, Liquid, who is that, like, Victor, Nazgul, whatever his name is, right? I need 600k for this guy. I need you to buy it from He's going to be going to be this. You need to give me, like, whatever. Oh, yeah. What Was that a thing? Like, we don't know. Maybe for somebody else. I mean, all, the obvious all answer is like Brazilian, Brazilian, yeah, 600k. Or bringing in Kadian. Was that Zeus' decision or was somebody else? Getting twists back, was that Zeus or somebody else? Like, you need to know how they, 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 these people in the organization, they need to be on the same page when it comes to the building this thing. If, for example, uh, the organization, the management want to bring twists back because he's, what, North American, and then... Zeus wants to bring a Brazilian back. Maybe they need to talk about it to see if that will actually work. Somebody needs to take a step back. Some compromises need to be taken, like to see what's the best for the team, right? Rather, what's, what's the best for the individual and whose path and whose plan do we follow? The upper management, Victor, Steve, whoever is there, or Zeus and his staff? Does that make sense? Like, which or which path are we taking? Because if we go to double path, if we go left and right, at the same time, they're going to be here where they are right. And they have a better chance if they follow one of the plans. So that's how I see it. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't, I don't know. I have any inside information. So I'm just saying what I see from the outside. Do we have another hot take? Maui, do you have one? Mm, no, I use my my take, my the Imperial take, and it just was... I have one more. If Come, you on. Want. <laughs> Come on. This is like just to, to, to fill up the thing, like... It's also yeah. when it comes to the major and the American, North American region. Outside of complexity, who is already in the second stage, not a single North American team will pass the first stage. Of the Amer match. Americas, Americas. Americas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Americas, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. Sure. Okay. Surely. Yeah. Oh, what did we say? That's yeah. uh, okay. four, four teams, other four teams. Pain, Legacy, Furia, and Plus One. But here's where, I, I think that's a pretty game. safe take, though. But here's why. I actually do think the biggest problem you have if you're Liquid is, uh, even though you were joking, I know why you joke of, like, did he actually watch the games or did he just look at the scores? Because if you look at the scores and you look who they played, it's easy to go, oh, it's not that big a deal yeah. for Team Liquid. But if you watch all the matches from the Americas RMR, the level of play, like we said, was appalling. Like, the fact that Imperial 3 Z Road is indicative of how dog shit that RMR was. And the joke is, we all think... Uh, Imperial's going to do nothing at the major. So I do think, like, the actual eye test on the games was really bad. It was really fucking bad. You like, know, the joke but, but, is, but, you can tell when Complexity played Liquid, it was one of those ones where it's like, the winner doesn't even feel joy. They just feel relief that they didn't <laughs> lose the game. You know what I mean? That's a problem. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you could see and that look, look on their face, bro. You could just see it. The, the <laughs> thing is, like, with, with North America, with America's team, like, South and North America right now, it's not because, like, they, they played the low level of Counter Strike. That's fine. Like, you know, whatever. But the, the gap between the European teams and the, those North South American teams right now is huge. You see teams like ecstatic. Let's let's open their games into the into the when they play the RMR. They beat OG, they beat Monty, they beat Guild Eagles on land. We always know that Guild Guild Eagles are always good in these situations. They had like some legitimate wins. They qualified. All these teams that are there, you know, heroic and then uh, even saw the guys who just made it to the blast finals in London yesterday. Uh, all these teams are going. Cloud9 is going to be there. Eternal Fire is also one of these teams that played well and as well. So compare all these teams to these four North American, South American teams. And do you, you tell me in a realistic way, do they have a chance against them? I think none of these teams are good personally. I think there's a world where like maybe Furia, Furia could fluke their way out. Obviously, Complexity could maybe do it. But uh, by the way, I, if people haven't noticed, I'm not actually a big Complexity fan. Like the saddest thing is, Elise actually really does have to be like one of the best players in the world for them to maybe win. 
Not even to win, to maybe win, which is a bummer mm-hmm. to me. I've got a more spicy one. Here's one. It's rage related. I'm going to give you a prediction here, guys. So uh, what I want you to do before you go mental at the take, because it's going to sound really spicy, but it's not as bad, but it is still a hot take. I think it still qualifies. Pull up all the teams at the major, guys. And all I want you to think is, obviously, for the playoffs, you can only have eight teams. So look at all the names and think of all the big names there are, like Spirit and Faze and Vitality and G2. Think of all that. Remember, you can only have eight teams in your playoffs. Here's my yeah. hot take. I actually think one of the eight teams to make the playoffs of this major will be heroic. That's mm. a spicy one for you. Here's why. Because I actually think the funny thing about that lineup is it's an example of a team. And I've seen this happen so many times in football, actually. So maybe, Kassad, you can relate to this example. Is when you have like the whole off season and obviously you have the certain teams, they do, you know, they do get all their signings done immediately. They're like the ones who spend the most money. They've been trying to get a guy for months and months. You always have those teams where during the off season, you just don't know what direction they're going. And you don't know like, how are they going to replace this player? Or what, what, what are they, what's actually the vision? And right, at the end of the off season, they announce their lineup, but because in your brain you've been thinking, ah, oh, they're irrelevant, they're not gonna do anything. Sometimes you get lineups that are like sleepers, and it's only when at the end you realize, like, wait, this is actually a way better lineup than I first thought. So, because obviously they had this big back and forth in this like previous period at the end of last year, people don't know where, like, the rumor was, like, do they get kicks in? But then again, what's going on with the end smoothing? Are they signing there's some pious guys and they get the armor? And so, because there's this back and forth, and actually behind the scenes, once I found out, actually, no, those players are going to Falcons, not to him. Uh, Heroic. The actual story was like, right, Heroic lost the off season and they're in deep shit now, aren't they? And then you looked at who they did sign, and I'm sure a lot of people were like, right, these players are all right, but like, what's there's like a mess of players, like what the fuck? So kicks and plus nerds, plus the old like secondary parts of Heroic, plus naked dots. That just looks like what? That's like almost like it's like it's like you've made something better than an OG in a Fnatic roster, but not actually at the level of what you'd think like an Enter a Mouse would even have. You're like, what even is this roster? But all I'll say is if you watch them actually play bro the actual flaw on this team is really good like in fact the joke is it's only actually like they're sort of like i said on the snake and banter it's only basically naked or so i think sort of like not that good everyone else in this team not only is good but they look good together like kickson actually has lived up to the hype it looks like he's just a fucking good igl mate think about it he's not working with any of the players he had in the past team then you go and look at fucking people like chush and tessas look i already knew they were good anyway from the old bad lions but like they haven't dropped anything since fucking kd and the rest left it certainly wasn't who made these guys and then Nertz I actually was worried maybe Nertz is like a product of Snappy bro he just looks fire he just looks actually like for real by the way the joke is if you want a hot take if they actually were a capable enough team this motherfucker would be like top 5 at the end of this year for like HLTV he has like the talent to do it so look I don't think Nikos is that good but I think this team could sneak in the top 8 boys I think they can go to the playoffs of the major which is wild but I think they can do it Her- Heroic are to me, in terms of like another team that's better than them and like what they're trying to aspire to be right now, they're the poor man. To me, they're the poor man's Navi, where they're better than people maybe thought because it's just this amalgamation of random players seemingly. But then you have a really good IGL behind them, Alexi for Navi, Kixan for for this heroic team. But the problem is that like I like the Nikodos problem. It, it's a it is a problem. He's not that good. He's the worst player in terms of role for role on the team. And I would actually be willing to say, like, I look at I look at the other teams at the major who's like my dark horse to make it. I could have done a bunch of predictions on that. I'm going to be releasing other content sure. in other places for this kind of stuff. Mine would have been Eternal Fire because actually I just trust Waxic more than I trust Nikodos okay. right now. And that that kind of hurts me to say that based off of what I've seen from Waxic. Make, make that your hot take. It's you true. Make Eternal Fire top it. You want to do it? Yeah, yeah. Eternal. Yeah. Well, I I said I said on a maybe. Ooh, was it like at the beginning of this year before Katowice? I think it was. I was like, or like around Katowice's time, I said, I think Eternal Fire is going to make a top eight at a like an S tier land this year. It could very well be this tournament okay. for me too. Like, I think that Eternal Fire is super underrated. But I, the one problem with Heroic is simply that. I just feel like to make it that deep, you really do need some kind of elite opera. And I think the rifle talent on Heroic is definitely solid. Like I've seen what Nerds has been able to do. And you're right. At the beginning of this lineup, dude, some of Nerds's plays look straight up stupid. Like when I was watching him play open qualifiers, close qualifiers, I was like, Nerds is a hindrance to this team. Boy, he shaped up super quickly. And I have to attribute that to not only Kixan, but Saw. Like this guy behind the scenes has put in put in so much work in terms of getting a team up to speed quicker than other teams and like what he did with ends like again so many people on ends were crediting saw for yes. what he was doing with that lineup and so i feel like he's a real big reason why the concept of this team has worked out as well as it has and exceeded many people's expectations including my own 
listen, it does help a lot when you bring players and they bring points with themselves, right? And you have spots on the events, so you get like to play more sure. events quicker than other teams. That's one thing. For me, they are... Oh, where do I start? They are two players away from being a championship contender team, right? They are right now, yes, Dunk, I think they can uh, be top eight at the major. I also think Eternal Fire definitely can be top eight at the major. But I don't think Heroic will. I have a, uh, Maybe we can make a, like a Eternal Pager or whatever. That I'm saying that there is a bigger chance for Heroic to be out in the first stage than go to the top eight. So if if let's say I win if they if they lose in the first stage you win if they go to the playoffs but if they stay in the second stage it's a draw right? okay uh, the thing is like the reason for this it's not because they are playing bad or they have bad players the reason is they don't have a deep map pool anymore like they don't have a deep map pool whatsoever the reason for that is they're playing all these events they're playing the qualifiers they they play the blast they play the now the at the moment I think right now they're playing the close qualifier for one of the events. Uh, they have to play all these things that they're going to the major where the, all the majority of the teams will be heavily prepared to what they're doing. On top of that, I don't see Nikodos being the same player on land that he's online. It, the, the types of the, the moves that he is making is... Like, just compare the games and you will see the difference in the reactions, the difference in the confidence, the difference in all these aspects that are kind of, you know, online and online. It's a, it's a different story, basically. But... Overall, I do think they can make top eight, but with some practice time, I don't think they pract- they have the time to practice enough, which is a major problem when it comes to the teams like Heroic. And, you know, and it just, I don't think it's going to be enough in regards of map pool. And I think they're going to make it to top eight. They might get it to the top, uh, to the second stage, but I don't see them in the top eight of the major. On the other side, Eternal Fire, I think they're properly rated. I think they're underrated by the fans. But they are very properly related between the teams behind the scenes. Like people understand they're in a good form now, they're on the rise, they're playing good Counter-Strike on multiple maps, they are very organized team, they have a good roles. The Vicadia guy is super, super good as well. Mm-hmm. And even though Voxic is not a tier one fucking super top five op, he's still like doing okay. And like overall, they, play, they speak the same language, which is a very beneficial thing in that team and they have the same vibe around them because they're all countrymen in good and bad as well so overall i think they have a better chance to qualify the top eight than heroic so i'm gonna side with maui on this one but heroic itself i i I just say like kickson and nerds were two great signings (coughs) great signing kickson is a solid idl and it's more than a solid IGL, even though his rise was like super quick. He was overpaid. Yes, absolutely I agree with that. His, <laughs> his price was very inflated, but he's a good IGL. So, and obviously Nerds for me is a top 10 player right now. He, maybe even more than that. And the whole vibe around him and all like the, the his personality kind of fits his play style as well. He's very explosive, very vocal, very outspoken. He wants to like it. He's you know, very engaged with the game in a sense. He's very passionate about it, right? So I liked him, you know, he would be a great addition to any team, any team in the world. So if they managed, for me, the two question marks are Nikodos and Tessis, right? I think if you slot in a, a, an entry instead of Tessis, and then you slot in a, an opera that's, you know, uh, a higher caliber than, than Nikodos, this team can be even better than old Heroic. You should have actually just made that last one the fucking hot take. Why, yeah. why did he just? I know crazy. why. Why did he build up? A, he built up a whole bunch of shit that like everyone would agree with. That was tepid as fuck. And at the end, he just goes. And if they just add someone else, probably better than that team that we all said was like the best team in the world for the last year. Like what? Why did he fucking lead with that? Why are you yeah, bury the lead at the end? That's so insane. It's, it's a cliffhanger. What do you mean? It's the end of the show. Okay, right. Mm. right and, and, the funny thing, I can't lie. That we should probably do that as like a way to get people to click. If we just on a cliffhanger they're like what the hell find out next episode will Kit will Maui actually be able to take a sad take that that was the best team on whatever whatever on that one yeah because here's the thing low key uh, this isn't going to necessarily it doesn't have to be a hot take I could you know what I could do it as one here's what I'll say if you pull up HLTV's top 
X ratings now. So go look at like, the top 10 teams, mm. right? I actually think, by the way, they're pretty good at the moment. Like, if you look like roughly where all the teams are, I think most of them aren't that fraudulent, you know, like Mouse, for example, is pretty good. Navi's not bad. Like, VP's around. Obviously, Falcons aren't going to be at the major. So there's one out of the eight that aren't going to be there. But then you have yeah. Ents, Cloud. You have a whole bunch of top good um, teams. Here's my take. I actually think this is going to be a major. Well, this is why, by the way, I'm good. If you think I was bad at last majors, I'm going to complain so fucking much about the format of this major because I have a really bad feeling that just like the Blast Paris uh, major, we're going yeah. to have one of those ones where in the playoffs, like half the teams aren't even the top rate, rated ones, you know, like I think we'll have a few. Like I think maybe, you know, the phases and spirits of the world you can bank on to get there. But mate, when I look at some of the other names, even by the way, the likes of the G2s of the world, bro, they're, they're, those lineups ain't the same since GKS walked, mate. Some of these teams that, that looked straight fire on paper they aren't the lock so like I could see a world where because when I was thinking of that one for the heroic one bro there's a lot of teams in that dark horse spot ends fucking like you go look at the squads that you go look down the list mate there's a bunch of teams can fuck, it up, fuck people up and get that last spot so I'm scared of, I'm so scared about that second Swiss phase boys I'm so scared is this a hot is this a hot take to be a counter take? I actually think that of, for whatever reason, I I have I have the faith right now that the favorites are I think that of the eight teams that make the top eight of the major, I think six of them are gonna be ranked in the top. 10 like okay. i actually think for whatever reason i just feel like the the favorites to me feel so far above a lot of the underdog teams like yeah we we threw out heroic right there i threw out eternal fire as like teams with a little bit of potential that are outside the top 10 but i actually i really i really do believe in a few of them like of any team that's in the top 10 that i think is probably the least deserving or i don't think is going to do as well it's probably ents you know like ents just always it felt a little bit fluke like their cattle run in particular just felt like a bit of an overperformance to me even though they were okay after that but like i i don't really necessarily i don't necessarily believe in them as much but like i don't really see too many of the underdogs like really punching up because i feel like some of the reasons that they got into this position is just like they have pretty good teamwork but they're not like doing any anything super out of the box just yet whereas like watching the paris major it was like okay people were so good mechanically at csgo at that point because the game had been around for 10 years that they went beyond teamwork that it was just like oh yeah cypher is just gonna headshot everybody like that's fine you know he's gonna he's gonna headshot everybody on two maps even if he has like uh, deficiencies in other parts of his gameplay <laughs> and i'm sure Kassad hey, is, hey, is hey, resident. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> i like cypher i like cypher don't get me wrong but like he was obviously this like incredibly mechanically talented because csgo was out for so long that some of these guys were grinding the game for no joke a decade before they finally got that one in 10 major occurrence where it was like okay my mechanics are so good right now that i can just run through a major purely off of that ability Let and i just feel like that's, it's it's less apparent now the I'll, mechanical I'll, difference. I'll give you a challenge like both of you for the, like the end of the show i guess there's eight teams in the second stage phase spirit vitality mouse vp navi g2 and complexity how many of those eight will end up in the playoffs go yeah, I'm gonna say I, like I, four or something. Not many. I think I'm I'll say, I'll, say I'll say five. I'll say five. Yeah. Okay. I'll say five. Because here's why though, because Maui's made the mistake that everyone makes, which is you also forget how bad the format is. So first yeah, of all, we, we've never had guys, we've never had an MR12 in BO1s. You're gonna have some insane uh, BO1 yeah. upsets. You're gonna have one of those upsets. Here's our prediction right now. Here are two maps where you're ready for the nightmare fuel. Enjoy being the the team that wins the CT pistol on nuke and then gets forced back by the T's. Enjoy that nightmare fuel CT side. That's a BO1, boys. You literally you fuck that one up. You don't or, and then that seeding. Everyone knows it. We've all seen these majors, guys. You know when the right teams win and yeah. the right and the right teams lose, but then the seeding means like the two bombs play each other and then the two mega teams play each other. So you all that combined, uh, basically, I've learned that enough enough birds get into the engines that a bunch of the planes don't make it. I wish they all made it nice and safe, Maui. But much yeah. like much like a lot of air traffic in your country now, it's getting worse. You know, the planes, the wheels are falling off, the engines are falling, doors are just coming off in midair. That's the major format right now. And even though y'all are gonna all fucking gaslight me again, like when you were like, no, I think actually into the breach, Game of Legion and Apex are better than yeah. checks notes, all of the no. partner teams. It's like, what the fuck? But no. anyway, I'm just going to say, by the way, one of those teams that didn't make it, by the way, guys, not only G2 and Ents, teams that, like, for every second of the day, aside from that major, were always better than those teams. Like, and never for one second were worse. But okay. So I think, sadly, I'm so scared. I can't believe you have faith in it. Like, 
MR12 is going to kill this man, your boy. He's going to kill yeah, it. The format, it's the, kill it the, stop, stop bringing reality back into this. The format oh, is going to ruin this. Now I'm going to get really evil because this isn't even a hot take. This is just what's going to happen. And I'm going to ruin the whole major before it's even begun. Because are you ready? Here's the ultimate moment that will be Thorin's triumph. Is when in the final of the major, somehow it's a shit one-sided game. And because y'all hit BO5s and hated MR15, it'll be a 2-0 and it'll take like one hour 45 for the whole final. And they'll be like, right, well, close down the computer. Guess that's CS. Yes. See you in fucking six months. Like, enjoy how shit that final will be. It's why I'm just, <laughs> I haven't even seen a match yet, but I'm like, right, that's why the whole bit is ruined. So end CS2. <laughs> oh. Old and man yells at the wow. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm basically, I have no reason to, no, but, but I'm just hitting on the whole thing. Like you are not off, right? If, if <laughs> 12 people are watching these shows that we do and the content that people are making on YouTube about their game, like step in and delete this stupid system that we are like, you have the power yes. to do it. GSL. Yes. Best of three with seedings. Yep can be a thing and can be a very, very good thing. We never had that. We did GSL with best of ones, which was a yes. disaster. Yes. Now you have best of, now we can do best of three. We can have MR12. That's fine. Especially when we have MR12. Yeah. It should be a thing. Proceed, seed properly the teams that are like ranked high and ranked low and then go into a tournament, have the best eight teams deserved to be in a fucking playoff of a major right and then we have a strong playoff we will have a strong playoff bracket we will have strong groups where like people they need to beat two teams the two best of trees to get out and if you lose two best of trees you are out no matter who you are so it's simple as that but let's hope it will be changed for the shanghai because this is going to be a very big clown show